Here I have a Nintendo Switch that I paid £40 for. On the eBay listing it stated no power and in today's video I'm going to see if I can get it to work. I've had some good luck and practice with Nintendo Switches recently so I'm hoping that I can apply that to this device and get it up and running 100%. From what we can see we have the two bottom screws which is good. The Switch itself in condition wise doesn't seem to be too bad. We're missing the back kickstand but the rails themselves look pretty clean as well. Do we have the top screw? No we don't. The top screw is missing so I wonder if this one has been opened before. Do we have a game? No, we don't, unfortunately. And no SD card. The charging port we're gonna look more into underneath the scope, but I think that's where we have the problem with this Nintendo Switch. I think I can see a pin that doesn't look to be in the right place. And finally, the serial number for the Switch is XKJ. All right, let's take it apart and see what's going on. As soon as I've lifted up the hood on the device, I can see it's actually relatively clean. There's not much dust. This is in really good condition underneath, so far anyway. My usual port call would be to use this USB-C ammeter and put it into the charging port of the Nintendo Switch to see what reading we're getting, but because I know that we have a damaged Nintendo Switch, I don't wanna break anything further. And upon taking the metal heatsink off, this Switch actually looks in really, really good condition. The water damage indicator down here is still polka dot, so we have the white and red dots, which means that we don't have a switch that's been affected by water damage. That is wicked. And this thermal paste is actually still pretty wet. So I'm very happy with this purchase so far. Another good indication that this hasn't been opened is that the foam here hasn't been scratched. Before we get down to business, we wanna clean off the thermal paste that we have on the CPU. Now we can switch over to microscope cam to see exactly what's going on in the charger. And as you can see, this is the pin that I was talking about at the start, right at the top, it's completely destroyed and come up away from the plastic inside the USB slot, or USB-C slot, should I say. I mean, you've also got this one on the far right here, that's also come away. The ones on the bottom actually look okay, it just seems to be this one up here. What I'm hoping for is this actually hasn't done much damage to the rest of the board, but we are gonna investigate that now. And also please in the comments pray for me that we have no torn traces. We'll start the diagnostic process by putting the multimeter into continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a full connection or rather a complete connection. I like to test the fuse first, which is this little component right here above the USB-C charging port. And if we go either side, we should get a continuous beep, which by the sounds of it, we don't get anything. Oh, there we do. It's for some reason, this likes to play games with me. This happened on the other Switch as well. Now it's fine, but it wasn't before. We're gonna go a little bit backwards and we're gonna go now to the BQ charging chip. So we'll start with the coil. Do we get a continuous path? We're meant to get a beep, yes we do. On capacitors in mainly all scenarios from what I've learned with consoles anyway. On one side of a cap you're meant to have ground, which is where it beeps in continuity mode, and the other side where it doesn't beep. So for example, this cap here is fine. This one's also fine. That one's good. That one's good, that one's good, that one's good. Okay, what's nice is that we look okay around BQ. My first soldering job actually with a Nintendo Switch was to <laughs> replace this, uh, this chip here, the BQ chip, and I put captain tape all around here and I still managed to melt this component. If I was to go about this now, I would completely flip the board and just heat it from underneath and take the chip off that way. I think that would make life so much easier. Now we go on to our favorite chip, the M92T36. We'll check the CPU cap. That seems to be fine. We got an initial beep, but it's all good. P13 cap, also okay. These three caps up here, we have a short. So we have a shorted M92T36. And that's because we have a beep on these caps here on the bottom side. And we'll also have a beep up here on that side as well. This one's fine, the first one. Yeah, M92 is definitely bad and the rest of them seem okay. So we'll definitely be replacing the M92 T36 chip. Let's flip it over to the back now and look at the P13 Pi 3 or P13 chip, whatever you want to call it. And I doubt we're gonna have a short here. No, we don't. We're okay, we're okay on this one as well. First things first, I wanna remove this port and then I'm actually gonna really quickly see if I still have that short on M92. Because I think sensible, Joey, what I, sh what I should have done is remove this first and then done the measurements. But I'm pretty sure M92 is still going to be kaput. I'm probably gonna go with a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 80% to get the port off. Let's add a bit of flux. Let's go. And there we have a nice clean extraction port removal. Before I tidy that up, I just wanna check and see if we've still got that short on M92. Do we still have the short on these caps? Yes, we do. 
So no change there from removing the port. So we still have a bad M92 T36 chip. Let's take this chip off quickly. We'll do that first. Let's add some leaded solder. This is a new tip, so I think it's playing off me a little bit. I think it's a little bit too small for this job. Okay, let's get another M92. Okay, tiny bit more flux. Now it's time for my favourite part. Ice prep alcohol, toothbrush and a cotton bud. Right, how are we looking? That's the question. This side. Oh good, look at that. There seems to be a little bit of a dodgy connection on the ones on the right. I don't know if you can see, but they don't look like they're joined to the chip as they should be. That side's fine. So I'm just going to run the iron over them. Clean the iron. Tiny bit of solder, ever so tiny bit. Still a bit more maybe. It's tough because of that capacitor. That's a lot better. Nice. Now we need to clean out all of the solder that we see on the pads of the port, as well as the ground holes, etc. So we can do that now. Apply some flux. I'm actually just gonna add some leaded solder here. Just to help with the process. Makes it a lot easier to clean up. Now we're going to tin up the pads, leaded solder. We're also going to tin up the port, make life a lot easier when we put it on the board. There we go, nice. Plenty of flux, here we go. I've just given it a good clean. This pin here, pin number four from the left, was actually quite loose, so I had to just get the soldering iron out and make sure that it was definitely in place, because all the other ones were fine, and when I when I was reflowing it, this one just wasn't taking the solder, so I don't think maybe enough solder was on the pad itself, so I just had to put a little bit more down, but everything else should seem, sorry, solid, and it looks solid, so I'm hoping we get charging both sides, but only time will tell. I'm just gonna fill in the ground holes real quick on the back. Get the flux back down, nice, nice. 
I actually think the chisel tip is my favourite tip for filling in holes. I don't know why that is. It covers a big surface area, I guess. You see on the other side, look how much of that solder has flowed through. That's lovely. Really, really nice and secure port. Time for a clean. Get rid of all the flux, make sure we do as much as we can. It's impossible to clean every single aspect of it. Unless you have an ultrasonic cleaner. That's a game changer, apparently. And there we go. Here's the back of the port, which I think looks A-OK. -okay. Looks nice and clean, nice and strong. And then we have the front, which again, looks nice and clean, nice and strong. So let's see what the result is, shall we? All right, moment of truth. I have most things, again, plugged in. So I've got just the battery, the NAND, the backlight cable, and the LCD screen. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck. Here we go. Come on. Let's do this. 5.2 volts, not drawing any amps. The battery's connected as well. The charger turns on this side, okay. And I'm assuming, no, we don't have any backlight. Let me try on the other side then. So is it the port? It works this side as well. And the port seemed pretty solid when I finished it. And I know for sure at least the back line were 100% solid, so it should work on one side. That to me tells me maybe something with M92. So let's get back under the scope. I've had a look over the port again and I think it seems okay. So my guess is gonna be that M92 isn't. So I'm gonna replace that now. Just changed the chip and as you can see I think this one is a little bit better I don't know if it was the uh, this is a different chip to the one that I had on the board so this is the third one that's been on this switchboard I don't know if it was because of the bad soldering job that I did last time or whether it was the uh, chip was faulty itself but everything was looking like it had a connection previously that looks good that looks good that side this side looks great and this side looks great so all corners covered everything nice and straight let's see what happens now was that the issue Here we go, the second moment of truth. The moment of truth of the moment of truth. I'm really hoping it was the M92 and not the charging port itself. That charging port swap actually felt okay. Come on, give me some good news. 14 volts, that's what we like to see, 0 0.06. And yes, get in, there it is. We have the charging symbol on the Nintendo Switch. It's 0 0.1 amps, which is relatively low, but that's because probably the battery is so dead. If we turn it over, do we get a charge on this side? That's the question. Here we go. It recognizes 0.06, 14.8 volts. Yeah, there it is, and it's climbing. Do we have a picture? We do indeed. Get that good amount of thermal pasta. There you are, nice. You can see that we've now gone up to 0.74 amps and the switch has turned on. Do we have parental lock? No, we don't, that's wicked, yes, okay. We have quite a few games on here as well. That's really, really interesting. Let's do some real quick tests. So let's pair the Joy-Cons and see if they work. That's all good. They, ooh, that one took a while, you know. I don't know why that took so long. Let's try again. Paired. Oh, okay, there we go. Are we okay if I move it about? Yeah, I think so. I wasn't getting this click, but I now am. I don't know, maybe because it's been off for such a long time. But that seems absolutely fine. And we're getting 0 0.95 amps now because the controllers should also be charging. That is something to look for, which they are, that's perfect. Does the game work? Mortals Phoenix Rising is what we wanna see. And there we go, it's popped up straight away. And I've also just tested that it works on a docking station so we can tick that off as well. We have fixed this 40 pound Nintendo Switch. I'll leave a video here if you enjoyed watching this video that relates somewhat to this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new around here and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.